third, fourth place game after this will be taking a lunch break. Mm -hmm. But then when we return the grand final as well as the final boss battle where the winner will go on to face E.G. Idra in the notebook battle. It'll be exciting, so you won't want to miss that. And it looks like we have cross-map positions here on Lost Temple with Slush in the left is the Red Zerg. In the right we have Blur, the 3200 Terran now uh, as the Blue Terran. In these positions, Zerg's going to be very, very content. Again, whenever you have cross-map positions, the most important formation is that center Zell Naga watchtower. So important to control your watchtower, because any time you control one of the watchtowers, you have a much easier time defending that entire half of expansion. One watchtower covers six bases very, very well. So going to be a long macro game. Would be surprised to see any sort of goofy cheesiness action, but um, I should probably not make such a bold claim so early on because both these players have been doing some crazy cheesy antics all tournament long. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you just never know. Uh, you know, anything can happen with the cross-map positions, and the sooner you can identify that, the sooner you can kind of prepare what your early game build is going to be. The Supply Depot is going to be finishing here, and uh, we'll be seeing what our players are going to be doing early on. It looks like a drone is moving out. No, just a scout drone. Mm -hmm. So I uh, believe, well, we'll see here as he's getting a few more drones. No, he's got 15 and 16 coming out as well. So uh, there he goes with that as he's going to send it over, drop that hatch. Yep, 15 food already out right now for Slush playing the duper economic game. Looks like he has not done much teching in this series thus far, even canceling that gas geyser in the previous yeah. game, opting for that little bit of a faster pool. Blur now about three-fourths done with that barracks. 100% done with this refinery, as is expected at this phase in the game. We do see Slush building a 14 pool, so hey, looks like we might even make our way to the end game this time. Yeah, certain, uh, certain it'll happen. We got drone now coming forward, and the first marine is not out quite yet, so he's gonna go in here, peek things Ooh. out. Does see the second refinery going down, as well, but he stopped building it. Um, so I don't know if that was just a fake or what. Uh, marine you know, will block him in. Blur may have thrown that down just because he doesn't want to get gas. Excuse me, gas blocked. Oh, good call. Dum, dum, dum. So, all right, he d has thrown down that geyser. Drone's going to be aware that nothing is being constructed out of that, but still this would be another indication to me that Blur really does want to be going for some sort of Banshee play again, as there's really no reason that you would uh, want that geyser so desperately badly, other than the gas, to get a bunch of Banshees. Drone does get executed in the corner. And over on the other side, we got the hatch just now finishing, and uh, we are getting a switch. A reactor coming out on the barracks, a factory going down as well. Uh, and then we're also going to be seeing queens at both hatch locations. Uh, gas is now well underway. We'll see if he'll uh, go for speedlings uh, right away, but drone mm -hmm. production continues here for the Zerg. So I would expect now to see the Terran going for a double Hellion build and then into a cloaked Banshee build. Double Hellion was like the earliest evolution of Terran vs. Zerg, people realizing, hey, I can get a ton of harassment right at the get-go no matter what he's doing. And then Terrans would usually expand after that, but the problem with that is that you would be passive for so long. There was this giant void of nothingness going on, so players like to set themselves up to follow it up with a Banshee harass, which is what we call a timeless harass. It will always be good at almost any point in the game. Slush is going to use uh, the first energy on his queen to drop a creep tumor, as well as put down this very early spine crawler here, and I feel like even though this might seem a little blind, uh, it's really going to probably be very effective versus what is coming at him. So I do like this play. we got the Overlord sneaking into the base in the back as well. We do have no Zer though only a few Zerglings out, and speed is halfway done. Uh, so although those Hellions are not moving forward yet, uh, there's not a whole lot of uh, units out here to deflect this. Whoa, it looks like Blur was not going for any sort of standard stable follow-up. He's doing some sort of huge all-in. He's getting another factory and another barracks, and Slush is positioned to spot both of them. He's inches away, and he is going to spot the second barracks. Is he going to dart up and spot the other structure as well? And he does see it! Oh, he sees the factory and the barracks. Oh, that sucks so much for Slush. Yeah, those Hellions did try to make er, it away into the uh, base. Uh, and uh, nice job 
Blocking the ramp with the queen there. Drone production continuing. Eight drones on the way. And maybe he knows he's going to have some roasted drones. So he's just making extras now. No, obviously that's not the case. Lair is just going to finish now. The drones all pop out. The queen and the spine crawler are going to have to do all the work. The baneling nest is down as well. Now, where is Mr. Baneling Nest? Somewhere around here. Aha, I found you. I am not sure how well this push is going to work by Blur. It looks like it's a double tank, double, double marine build. He's going to be getting two reactors on his barracks. So he can churn out a ton of marines and just do a very fast tank push. You know, in Brood War, that was a very popular build. Just an ultra-fast tank push with a little bit of support. So it looks like Blur is containing with these Hellions initially, and then he wants to, again, do a big push with support. Now, do you think it could have been a mistake to put the Baneling Nest down here? Um, well, did it get spotted? It looks like, no, I th I'm pretty comfortable with that positioning at this point. Spire it, is coming down, but I don't know if it'll be useful. It just seemed like uh, he was going to go ahead and move forward with this attack, would be able to see it early, but it seems like that spine crawler was just enough. He's going to move out with the Lings now. He does have some nice creep coverage. At least he can get vision, uh, and we do. Uh, we had some unit, just one Ling going off there. He is going to see that he got destroyed by a tank, so he at least knows that those are out as well. Has the watchtower, but here could come that first push. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Zergling is going to try to get off a very nice surround, and it looks like they've captured maybe one heli and they do manage to get that one down but they are taking some pretty significant losses and with that giant train of marines and tanks coming in it's going to be a pretty intimidating force but at the same time there are a lot of banelings en route blur is going to need to siege up these tanks very very early on yeah this is going to be uh this is going to be very very crucial timing here for blur he's going to actually siege one tank up in the back move one forward and then keep a couple uh, in the middle, and he will take out these creep tumors. Essential play from uh, Blur. Absolutely needs to have that creep as limited as possible because, again, Banelings are so fast with that upgrade and on creep. There's the speed upgrade. Now finishing Slush is going to be waiting a very long time before he ends up moving forward. Uh, and here come the Banelings. He needs to target fire those Banelings. Oh, he's not moving his Marines, but that's okay. All the Banelings get taken out by the tanks. What a push oh. by Blur! What amazing accuracy with those tank clicks, and now Blur is just rapidly sprinting forward. Yeah, he's going to morph some more Banelings, but it's going to be real tough as these leapfrogging siege tanks are going to set up in perfect position. It's going to try to move away the spine crawler, but it's not going to matter. That hatchery is going to go down oh so quick. We do have more Zerglings on the way. Here come the Banes and the Lings moving uh -oh. right into uh -oh. those uh -oh. tank lines. And oh again, my God. oh, all the Banelings get picked off. Blur is just doing such a great job with this slow push. The Mutalists are coming out right now, and Blur has no transition to boot. He is committed to this attack. If he wins right now, that's awesome. That's exactly what he wants to do. If this doesn't work right now, he is 100% done in this game. Yeah, and you know what? Had he taken out a few of those Marines with the Banelings, suddenly these Mutas popping would be that much more effective. Obviously, yeah, just yeah. picking off these tanks and any reinforcements coming. But he managed uh, that very well. A lot of Baneling damage was done to the Siege tanks, which didn't really benefit him at all. Here come the... Here come the Mutas trying to do some damage here. One tank was taken out, but there are enough Marines to make this really scary for four Mutas. Second one goes out while the repair is underway. One Muta is lost. Three more Mutas on the way. But as you can see, with that base gone, the Baneling Nest is at risk, and we are on one base Muta, which is never a good place for a Zerg. Yeah, but I honestly think that if Slush can do enough damage to these incoming um, Marines that he can really still be in a comfortable counterattack position, but those Marines are popping out four at a time. Just a limbo line of units swarming up. And still from Blur, no engineering base, so he's building one right in the midst of his units. I actually like that because that's the most defended spot for them on the map. Yeah, that's actually pretty smart. And look at this Leapfrog. Here comes another tank sieging us. The Mutas oh. come forward as well. But there's still so many Marines left over. And one has to ask himself, were all those Banelings worth it? He could have tried to split up a little bit more. We'll try to take out these Marine reinforcements, then hit the tanks from the back. Might be able to stop that eBay as well, and oh. he does. We'll do some damage to the siege tanks in the back, but don't forget that he can move forward and start to work on that main. Plus, the Spire is at risk. 
Only 100 hit points left, and it will go down. Oh, no, he could have built four more Mutalists, which would have doubled his Muta count. Could have been picking off a lot more of these incoming Marines. Blur actually does not have that many Marines out on the field. Another hatch being backbuilt by Slush, and he is reconstructing that Spire. Oh, how tragic. I mean, he's doing amazing damage to all these incoming Marines. But uh, Blur understands how fragile of an army he has still. Wow, he's going to put down that second hatch in the base while, again, this mobile unit continues to move forward. Another ex uh, building is taken down. The extractor goes uh, goodbye, and Slush moving out all his overlords uh, over there. And this is just so nasty as Blur just continues to move forward. Eventually, there'll be no more room for Slush to retreat. And it looks like he's decided to advance forward. He's picking off the tanks first, not letting the Marines take damage from that tank fire. It looks like he's still darting around. And there's the good game. Looks like the series has been tied up 2-2. Two to two. Blur, the master of one base timing pushes in this tournament. Yeah, uh, that was a solid one. And he executed it very, very nicely. Uh, slush... Uh, you know, he he had the right idea. Maybe mm -hmm. a few uh, moments where he could have done a little bit more damage with the Banelings, but when there are that many tanks, it's hard yeah, not to just yeah. watch them die. Um, and then just throw them into units just to hopefully at least not waste them. So Yeah, but a very, very nice timing push from Blur. <laughs> Pretty fragile game. If at any point those Banelings landed a connection on those Marines, that would have been the end of the push, and Blur was completely screwed. He has no other uh, infantry upgrades. He had no expansion coming, so that was a very much so all-in play. And it looks like it's going to be every Zerg's second favorite map, Blistering, Blistering Sands. Sand. So excited for this one as we will continue slush and blur when we return both games or both gamers uh, are tied with one game apiece so we'll find out going into game three what will happen and who will win two hundred and fifty dollars i'm dj wheat and i am day nine and don't go away because we will conclude this third fourth place match when we return